Today's topic will be told from Neko's perspective, but as always, the principle can be applied to any other hero who can naturally snowball off a lane. Since the laning phase isn't the subject for this video, I'll briefly skip over it and focus on the aftermatch. At this point, by continuously applying pressure on Storm, I'm giving him two options. First one, stay in lane while constantly fairing regeneration to stay alive and get more experience off lane creeps. Or option two, retreat to jungle and farm also relatively fast but get a bit less experience, only showing to lane to try to depush. Whichever option Storm chooses, I will remain free farming and I use this advantage to chip at a tower any free second I get. This applies to any hero that threatens skill potential in the lane. If your presence is enough to drive the opponent to farm jungle or attempt side ganks, then you should stay in the said lane until the tower falls. There are of course exceptions, as heavy farmer heroes such as Elk and Broad can divide their time equally between pressuring tower and farming nearby camps. And naturally, a good rune opens up more possibilities. One neat little trick you can do at siege creep waves, if you're alone in the lane, is briefly tanking tower damage until the next creeps arrive. This ensures continuous damage. And with the opponent driven out of the lane, the tower falls. Of course, every game will be different, some mids will hang around the lane even if they're getting reduced farm just to defend the tower, and some other heroes can rotate for protection, if their laning partner can be left alone. But in good games, where you're dominating, a 10 minute tower knockdown is to be expected. This is where many players see the tower fall, cross it off their checklist, and go farm jungle feeling accomplished. Sure, Alchemist and Broad will gladly begin to consume enemy side of the jungle, but for our intents and purposes, we must bring our advantage to other lanes. With the enemy tower successfully dealt with, we'll begin looking at which other lane we can make the most impact in. Usually, it depends how easily given set of heroes can deal with extra pressure, but in most cases the enemy carry will not want to waste his time fighting around tower and just find another spot to farm. So, to the enemy safe lane we go. Of course, as long as we're creating pressure in other place, we are leaving open another place. In this case, our mid tower can be pressured too. A good play would be to trade your places with one of the supports. They will enjoy the occasional free creep and the free XP, and in return, they deter the would be pushes, while we, in either side lane, just swapped out a weak itemless support for an overleveled, over itemized mid. So, yeah, just walk in and start beating up whatever is inside. You're fat. They're not. What can they do? If you find any downtime taking down towers, such as sparing down the remaining defending heroes, or waiting for the next creep wave, spend that time farming the enemy side of the jungle. Having full vision over it helps too, as it reduces safe space for their course even further. And if all things go as expected, we'll just sit in the lane, chipping away at anybody until the tower dies. Once that's done, to the remaining lane we go. The better you get, the more things you can get away with. For example, you can speed up the tower knockdown process by attacking the waves in between tier 1 and 2. Your creeps will reach tower faster and direct their full attention bringing it down. As long as you're sufficiently fat, and you should be after 2 full lane dominations, enemy will be very unwilling to engage with you. So as long as you're nice and fat, 
just frontline everything. Stand between towers, stand between waves, take their jungle farm. If enemy does decide to engage, they will waste enough time for your team to join the fight. This doesn't apply to just Necro, both mid and the offlane can perform such actions when they are ahead. Carry, to an extent too, but they like to farm around safer spots than to taunt the enemy in the face. So, by the mid game, we knocked down outer towers, made enemy jungle a dangerous place to be, and created space everywhere we went. Storm is still struggling to make his first bigger item, and this extends to the other enemy heroes too. What are we going to do next? Exactly the same thing we've done before until the throne falls. Maintain pressure, take runes, control outposts, control enemy jungle, give space, take space, defend our towers, and eliminate enemies. We're too fat, what can they do? Now let me remind you that in today's topic, I'm specifically talking about what to do if either you, the mid laner, or similarly the off laner, has rolled over their lane and became an unstoppable presence. You can only play extra aggressively if one hero is ahead and the other is behind. If laning went equal, you lost, or the enemy will come online from just 5 minutes in the jungle, like Alk or Meepo, you will need a different strategy and I will need a different topic. But in most cases, if you won mid, you won game. Thank you for watching, good luck.
being attacked. Not well, my dear. But it's technically attacked. Still, my dear. 